Hello everyone, my name is Rianne Staines and I run Sensational Minds Limited. This is an autism and ADHD specialist teaching service um, that was designed to support both parents and families, as well as schools, nurseries and other education providers. So I've been asked by Eve Coldbank to create a video for you today um, to talk about ambitious women in Essex and business owners, and I hope that I can share my journey with you today. So a little bit about me before we begin. Um, as I say, my name is Rianne Staines. I'm a fully qualified primary school teacher of 14 years. Um, I hold a SENCO qualification, which is a um, SEN coordinator, special educational needs coordinator in schools. I've been doing that for 10 years. I am an autism um, and ADHD specialist teacher. So I offer advice and support both to families and to schools. I have also managed to achieve my ADOS 2 training, um, which means that I am a qualified and certified assessor for children with autism. Um, and I work with a multidisciplinary team of professionals to um, come to a conclusion for diagnosis. Um, I set up Sensational Minds in 2019, <clears throat> um, following much change in my life from becoming a mum. And I work with a range of families to support them through their journey of children with additional needs. So I've been sent a few questions to ask, um, to answer, sorry, to answer. Um, and the first one is, what did I want to be when I grew up? So as a child, um, as a young child, uh, I used to have a notion that I would never work on my birthday. My birthday's in August. Um, so the the job that seemed to work right for me at the time uh, was to become a teacher. But I think also I wanted to become a physiotherapist at some point. Just I think it was just a big fancy word that I'd learned perhaps at school and thought sounded good. Um, but I soon realised when I got to secondary school that I did not like science. Science is not my strength. So um, I didn't really know what I wanted to be in all honesty by the time I got to about 16 and having to think about university or college choices um, I had a bit of a passion for making things and design and technology and woodwork I was quite good at that actually so I took that through to A-levels I did my A-levels um, and we were then asked to complete almost like um, a questionnaire if you like about our personal qualities can't remember what it was called, centigrade questionnaire, I think it was called, um, as a teenager. And it came out with three outcomes. The three outcomes and the best job fit that fit that fit my personality were, I never forget, a politician, not really me. I can talk a lot, but I'm not very good at conflict. Uh, number two was a zoologist. I love animals, but I'm not too keen on uh, cleaning them out, particularly larger animals. And then the third option was to become a primary school teacher. So I then kind of thought, OK, maybe I could do that. So over the summer holidays, I took some work experience to uh, work in some children's uh, summer camps. And I think at that point, I realised that actually I do really like this. I like organising. I like motivating children and I like giving the best possible outcome to children. So what made me get into my chosen career in industry? So once I would um, realised that actually education was a good fit for me um I then kind of looked back at my own journey my own educational journey and I realized that it wasn't that easy for me um I really struggled with reading I really struggled with writing um I had to have a maths tutor by the age of 14 and I was bullied quite considerably in uh, primary school and never really got over that moving into secondary school. I only had a very small network of friends. Um, so I think what kind of spurred me on by the time I completed my A-levels and thought, right, I need, to, I need to move on now, was that I could perhaps make a difference to children who, were, who are what, like I was at school. Um, and that's when I, did, I, I joined a charity called HCPC which was um, a handicapped children's pilgrimage uh, trust. And they used to take children with quite significant disabilities abroad um, on holiday to Lourdes in France and, and um, 
I'm a Catholic, so church was always such a, a part of my life um, and still is. And I went to a Catholic secondary school. And from there, I really found that working with children with additional needs was where my passion lied. And I soon realised um, that many children with additional needs were in mainstream schools. So that sort of kickstarted my journey. Once I'd got my teaching qualification, I knew that throughout my time as being a teacher, working with additional needs was something that I would, would really enjoy doing. And it still is to this day. So a typical day in my working life, um, I, my job as an independent specialist advisory service is not nine to five. Um, it's, <laughs> it can be really early morning starts or very late finishes for me, particularly with the autism assessment work thrown in as well. Um, so what I love about being independent is that I can manage my own diary and manage my own schedule which is great because it helped me to work around my children, my two wonderful children. I have two boys, um, one is four and one is 20 months, so nearly two. A typical day in my life at the moment is about networking um, and about building my business, um, about meeting people, meeting other professionals, um, getting to know families, individual families, taking inquiries um, through my website, and acting upon them and and very much at the moment it's admin based um i do offer training and advice to schools so sometimes i go into schools which is fantastic i absolutely love that um i also offer q a sessions with parents because i'm finding that giving parents a voice for, uh, around their child's special needs in a controlled and trusted environment is really important so i do that in the evenings as well so i work Oh, I work many hours, but they're kind of, it's not nine to five because being independent and having to provide for yourself, that's something that is really important to me is about being accessible at all points of the day. So do I think that um, I faced obstacles being a woman in my chosen professional profession even, sorry. So as, as an independent advisory service, no. I think that because I run my own business, I'm in charge of my own workload. I manage my own calendar. Um, I don't think that I faced obstacles as an independent provider. Um, I think one of the, maybe one of the obstacles that I have faced and haven't necessarily thought about until now, until this question, is that being a mum and running your own business can be quite difficult, can be quite stressful. Um, because ultimately when you, your direction or your vision changes because your children are at the center of everything that you do, they are the reason that you live and breathe or they certainly are for me. So I think the management of being mum and knowing when it's an appropriate time to switch your work brain off and just be mum I think that's perhaps an obstacle because for me I very much work with families that start off in crisis so there have been many conversations I've had with families where they're not coping or parents aren't coping or the child is not coping particularly you know and I become involved with that family I almost become a part of it for a little while and I I really work you know I go in sometimes I go into the home I go into the school I see what's going on I write reports and I can immerse myself in a situation quite easily and I think perhaps one of the obstacles for me is to get a good work-life balance um, I'm very very blessed I work with a team multidisciplinary team of professionals who are both female and male um, and as they are independent as well, they work very flexibly as well. So, um, yeah, I think perhaps that's one of the obstacles of being a woman in my chosen profession is about getting the balance between running my own business, building my client base, building my networks and being mum and switching back off. What would I give to anyone wanting to enter into my into my into, in, enter into my industry? So there are not many people that do the job that I do independently. Obviously, there are um, 
in schools there are senkos which of course i i've been a senko for many many years um but the pressures on schools are significant at the moment you know everyone's doing an amazing job in schools but there is definitely pressure pressure to recover after the covid pandemic children being out of education and so on so my service very much offers families um an independent pathway much of what schools can do i can do um and what i love to do is to build a relationship between home school and me so it's not a case of i go up against school no because i've worked in them i know how they work i know the limitations it's about looking more creatively at effective provision um my advice to anybody going into the world of scn independently is to network network with other people that do what you want to do so you will find that there are lots of people who are trained speech and language therapists there are trained occupational therapists um educational psychologists independent child psychologists um but there aren't many education uh based professionals in in um, in my local area particularly i have a small network which is fantastic um but my advice to you, if if this is something that you would like to do, if you would like to set up independently and, and offer something, offer your skill set to parents, it's about working alongside other people who are similar in position to you. So I am incredibly blessed that some of my mentors are also in the same position. They've worked in, um, say they've worked in hospitals for a long period of time and become now independent so it's a really wonderful thing if you can find a network of people that you can say look i found this really challenging can you how did you get by this can you help me with this and that makes a world of difference um my other thing uh, that i think would be great advice to people who might like to become independent is to really keep on top of your knowledge um you might have done a course a few years ago, but knowledge doesn't stay current all the time. Research doesn't stay current. So I spend a lot of my time reading journals, finding out the latest in medical advances or medical observation and so on, um, keeping things current. And also what's really important is if you are going to advocate for parents, it's about building relationships with them. Um, and to be a very empathetic and kind person, which I hope that I am. <laughs>